Welcome to the Health Made Easy podcast. Health advice so easy, you'll feel more confident about your body, health, and life. And now, your host, Dr. Connie Jean. Hi, Dr. Connie here. So my friend and colleague, Pam Hyde, who was visiting me from Oklahoma this past weekend was commenting about the glyphosate and its content in Cheerios, a favorite of my boys. So Pam Hyde is a board certified physician whom I highly respect and trust. So when she mentioned it, I was resistant at first, but grew more frustrated with the state of our food supply today. So I had to dig further and found lots of troubling information that I thought you'd want to know. So glyphosate is used as a primary weed killer on almost all crops, including corn, soybeans, wheat, and range of fruits, nuts, and various veggies. Concern regarding this commonly used weed killer spiked after the World Health Organization classified glyphosate in 2015 as a human carcinogen, and despite its warning, it's still being used all over the world. And what's more troubling is that its remnants are present in baby food, Foods, Cheerios, and various wheat products in the market. On top of it potentially causing cancer in ourselves as well as our children, it is also responsible for depleting the very soil that our crops grow in. So most of you know about my stance on gut permeability as the root cause of almost all disease. In discussing gut permeability, I'd like to talk about the degradation of the lining of our gut due to glyphosate causing either a gluten sensitivity or a true gluten intolerance such as celiac disease. In any case, I'm gluten free and feel much better when I do not eat gluten. And there's enough body of research to convince me that eliminating gluten for those of us who have chronic disease truly makes a difference in our health. But according to Dr. Seneff, who is a researcher from MIT, the increased use of glyphosate, which is an herbicide in Roundup, correlates to alarming increases in diseases today. He explains that although there's been significant alterations and genetic modifications in wheat over the years, wheat isn't the main problem. Dr. Seneff states that glyphosate in Roundup is what sprayed on wheat right before the harvest to intentionally kill it. However, wheat is not Roundup ready, meaning that it doesn't die even when exposed to this toxic chemical. Therefore, farmers falsely consider glyphosate to be non-toxic, but Dr. Seneff argues that it is highly toxic. He further explains that gluten found in wheat binds to the glyphosate, which is what disrupts the natural process in our digestive system. This disruption is more the reason why there's an epidemic of gluten sensitivity and intolerance like celiac disease. Essentially, the glyphosate bound to wheat is what causes it to be so allergenic, more so than the wheat gluten itself. For those who aren't familiar with celiac disease, it's an autoimmune condition that degenerates our gut lining from intolerance to gluten. The glyphosate also preferentially kills the good bacteria in your gut. When such good bacteria is killed off by glyphosate, then the wheat doesn't get fully digested, and what's not digested remains in our gut, causing a reaction. Remember, the friendly bacteria in our gut helps us to digest proteins that are typically difficult to digest. So the problem is twofold. Many of us have a compromised gut lining from overuse of antibiotics, various medications, and stress from life. Add to that, the wheat and gluten creates a perfect storm. Another issue with glyphosate is that it disrupts the natural order in our plants. In doing so, this affects the ability for three essential amino acids to be available to us as nutrients from plants, which are tryptophan, tyrosine, and phenylalanine. These three amino acids are extremely important to our health, and we depend on our food and our friendly gut bacteria to get them to us. But again, crops that are exposed to glyphosate is depleted of the nutrients, and our own gut bacteria can't create these nutrients due to the glyphosate content in our body, so many of us are deficient in such nutrients, especially tryptophan. 
tryptophan is an important neurotransmitter as it's a requirement to produce serotonin. And serotonin deficiency is a huge issue today as it's linked to depression, obesity, and celiac disease. Another amino acid mentioned above, tyrosine, is essential for thyroid hormone and thyroiditis Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism are very common problems today, especially for those of us with autoimmune conditions. So to recap, glyphosate can cause deficiency in the essential amino acids and blocks our body's ability to process and absorb our foods. And so glyphosate also damages our gut lining, causing gut permeability or leaky gut, which also adds to the problem. Another important thing to mention is that glyphosate affects our liver's ability to detoxify by affecting specifically what's called the CYP enzyme system. So there are many enzymes in our liver and they do many miraculous things which help our body detoxify, but glyphosate disrupts such enzymes. For example, vitamin D, which most of us are deficient in, is activated by the CYP enzyme. If our CYP enzyme system is disrupted, then we will, then we will also be deficient in activating vitamin D, which we know to be very important to our overall health. So as you can gleam, it's an issue I wanted to discuss because while I'm mostly healthy, I realize that we live in a toxic world. So to help you understand and get informed, I felt it was important to share this information to avoid gluten and wheat. I believe the more we understand the reason, the easier it is to implement and take action. So if you need more help, we have the Alkaline Detox Protocol, our Gut Restoration Guide, and our Alkaline Health Membership with all the links provided below. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at Dr. Connie Gian. Like us on Facebook. And lastly, subscribe to our podcast at healthmadeeasy.com. As always, please leave me comments and questions as I love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Health Made Easy podcast www.drconnyjean.com.